All right. Welcome, everybody, to the... <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Resident Services and Public Engagement Committee of March 13th, 2024. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Councilor Kelly. Present. Present. Councilor Scarpelli. I don't, I don't see him on Zoom. Councilor Sang. Present. And Chair Leno. Present. Yep. Uh, Councilor Scarpelli was at the previous meeting, but might be. Oh, Justin Sang is. Just yep. All right. So we're going to wait a little bit for Councillor Scarpelli, but I know he was at the previous meeting, so he should be here momentarily. The only discussion item on the agenda for tonight is 24-015, offered by Councillor Sang, resolution to discuss modernizing council communications and outreach strategy. Uh, do we have any uh, presentations on the floor, Councillor Sang. Thank you, um, Chair Lemming. I am going to go back to sharing the slides that I shared with everyone um, last last meeting, um, just to reorient ourselves in this meeting. Uh, give me one second as I set that up. I'd like to say there was a motion in the previous meeting which was passed for council members to submit their ideas for um, modernizing city council communications. We didn't, uh, nobody submitted anything in the meantime. So just to uh, provide, provide an update on that. But in any case, feel free to go on with the presentation. Thank you. Um, so I got a chance to sit down with communications director uh, Smirty. Um, last week, walking through the ideas, and um, I think the summary of our meeting was that he's very, very supportive of the council um, taking up a lot of these, most, uh, if, if not all of these initiatives. Um, he told me that he's worked in many municipalities and governments in the past, and it was strange to him that um, the legislative branch did not um, have any communications of their own, and so he, he said he would be supportive of it, that he would support us in um in distributing as well so he said um pending an approval from the chief of staff um he thinks it would be appropriate to um boost our uh, monthly newsletters in the mayor's newsletter um newsletters as well to include summaries of it in um the city newsletters as well um he said that he would um if, if we want to use the city's email list, he would help us uh, get access to it. But he also suggested that we work on um, further developing our own email list. I know the clerk has one, um, may, and I think that's a good jumping off point potentially for the distribution of the newsletters. But going really quickly back, um, so the press releases slash monthly, monthly summaries is the main idea that um, is I, I think it's the the, the um, headline piece of the communications reform uh, package, essentially to remind residents. Sorry, and remind sorry. Uh, one one moment. We had some. We had uh, Ms. Kaya said the sound is not working for the for the public in the chat on Zoom. Apologies. Um, okay. Just just let us know when. <laughs> yep. Um, Oh. oh, okay. All right, I got you. I think the council chair. Gotcha. All right, apologies. Uh, continue, Councillor Sang. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you. Um, so, from last week's discussion and from my discussion with um, Steve, the um, the monthly summaries basically would be um, created by a rotating group of councillors who sign up for this duty. Um, and I, I think it would, be, uh, it would be best if Chair Lemming created the schedule of counselors who were interested. Um, and essentially, each month, the com this committee, at the beginning of our meeting, we would um, vote and approve a summary of that month's uh, city council activities um, to go out to the public. So basically, just a summary, um, as some counselors are already doing. Now, the reason why 
we have decided on the rotating structure is that uh, a, a lot of our counselors have individually started newsletters at some point and because it gets to be a lot we all kind of drop off after a few months and sometimes we go back into it but it's really difficult to sustain over a long period of time and so we believe that creating the system where uh we have a duty to bring something in on a calendar system, but also something that's not too too um, demanding on counselors is the best system. And I think the rotating system um, is that solution. Um, so I would actually move. Um, I, I, I have sent the text of these motions to the clerk, um, but on the newsletter item, and we can vote at, uh, on these at the end of the meeting, um, but I would motion to start a city council newsletter to summarize important city council meetings and discussions, as well as inform the public as to upcoming meetings to be distributed prior to and approved at each meeting of the Committee on Resident Services and Public Engagement. Do we have a second on that motion? Okay, on the, on the motion of Councillor Singh, second um, by Councillor Callahan. Lazaro, uh, uh, Councillor Callahan. Sorry, I do have a clarifying question. I just want to make sure we are talking about an email newsletter specifically, or do you mean more broadly the this sense is... of a newsletter that could be email and other things as well? More, more broadly. Um, and so the idea is this newsletter, um, this monthly newsletter slash um, summary would um, be the the kind of baseline for us to create short, short form videos okay. informing residents on... Yeah. Um, I just didn't yeah. know whether when you said the word newsletter, I was no, that's sure a great that, clarifying that question. meant the email part of it, or if you were talking more broadly about More broadly. It. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. You. That was a yep. great question. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, and I would, there's a second motion that I think we would need to, to, to make. Um, so I'd like to move for the chair of the Committee on Residents, uh, Resident Services and Public Engagement to create and distribute a sign-up list slash sign-up survey of counselors who will rotate responsibilities in writing the City Council newsletter and or making short-form video summaries in collaboration with the Medford Community Media and to authorize the chair to create a calendar for these responsibilities. On the... Oh, second, motion. but also a question. Yep. Counselor Callahan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, I... I'm assuming that this um, sort of voluntary sign up will be available to all yes. city councilors and not just those who are on the, this committee. Yes, that's the that's the intention, and we can add in language in the motion to clarify that. Um, right. I can email the the clerk after I'm finished okay. speaking. Uh, that's 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 a good uh, <laughs> good detail to pick up on. Uh, so the that kind of speaks to. I'm going to go quickly to this slide. Um, the idea of creating short form videos, we know that some residents, especially for younger residents, it's easier to engage with government um, in, in a visual form rather than in reading. And so creating um, a short form video, nothing more than a minute or two, that summarizes what we've written and, uh, in the monthly summaries, I think would be really helpful, particularly for residents closer to my age. Um, and I, I think it would be, the algorithms on social media apps also do tend to promote this stuff too. And so if we want this, if we want our contents to be going out to a wider audience rather than a limited audience, I think um, it would behoove us to create short form videos. I think at the same time, um, we talked to um, Kevin from the uh, from Medford Community Media last week. He basically gave us the structure of how we would execute this. And so essentially what we do is Counselors who are interested in doing this um, would likely would create their own Medford community media accounts, and they can go into the studios to record or record something at home and send it into um, to Medford community media, and they can post it on their website and have it run on the loop um, on public access TV. Um, yeah, so that that's a short form video part. I wanted to um, to talk about it real quick because that was in the last motion as well. Um, now, I would also like to, um, on, on, on the idea of distribution, I think 
there's a little bit, there's continuous work to be done on making sure this reaches the widest audience possible. We talked about that a lot last week, um, from using city email lists to developing our own, um, to creating social media accounts, to working with a senior center to put it in their newsletter as well, uh, to working with whatever forms of print media might arise. Um, I wanted to create a cash hall motion um, to authorize the chair or a, a designee from this from from this committee uh, to work on that process continuously um, to basically empower the chair or that doesn't need to work on to work on creating those connections um, and so I would I'll like to move for the chair of the committee on resident uh, services and public engagement and her and or his designee to work with our communications director and other city staff to distribute the city council newsletter and create an email list for the city council to use Do we have a second for that motion first? All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Callahan. This is how we do it. It comes to me for questions. Um, <laughs> no, it's great. No, we, the questions are really helpful, yeah. <laughs> so um, it seems to me that in addition to an email, like having our own email list, specifically because of the laws around opt-in, mm -hmm. um, that any list you know, really should, if you want to have an uh, email list, um, then people have to be opt-in. Um, if, if we want for people to be able to get access to this information, they should be able to opt in. They should also be able to follow a social media account on their preferred social media platform. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, to, I, I want you to reread that, but to me that sounds a little vague, the language. I wasn't sure exactly what you meant by it. And I wonder if we can um, very specifically have something that's more talking about the creation of um, followable distribution platforms, which would include things like an email list that mm -hmm. people can opt into, um, a uh, you know an X account, a YouTube account, uh, you know blah blah blah, like yes. accounts on those specific platforms. So I, I have a motion coming up that okay. addresses that. <laughs> um, I, I wanted I, I wanted to do this motion slightly before, but since you're talking about that already, I can go to this slide. Uh, on on the topic of the email list, I've included that in this motion to create an email list for. So I'm sorry. What's the third motion? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm track of what they all are. So the first motion is, is the mo first motion is to create the newsletter. Oh great! The first yeah great got that. The second motion is to create a list of counselors who will rotate yep. responsibilities. Beautiful. The third motion that I just read out um, is basically to work with city staff and the comms director to develop ways to for outreach, for for distribution, and to create an email list for us to use. Um, and that actually might the best way to do that might actually just be working with the city clerk. But I think um, it, it'd be something that we should work on. That that might take quite a, quite a while to set up, and so I think we should empower someone to work on that outside of like a committee meeting. When you said that, it might take a while. Uh, the email, email list. list. Okay. Yes. Um, on the topic of social media, because you brought that up, I think um, so. Um, I think on the question of distribution, it's really important to find as many ways to distribute as possible. As as you said, um, it's important for folks to be able to follow on their preferred um, networks. And so, um, reach, I think, with that goal of uh, distrib distributing news in a more rapid manner, in a way that um, that folks are um, that folks prefer, in a way that is more casual and accessible and widespread. Um, I wanted our committee to discuss a little bit the creation of social media. Now, this is a little bit more complex, and so I wanted to get feedback from the committee first about it. I do see um, Steve has his hand raised, and I want to give him a, I would love to give him a chance to speak. Absolutely. Mr. Smirti. Can you be unmuted, or is, is that? Yeah. Hi, thanks for having me. Steve Smurdy, Communications Director. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, just to clarify, uh, we can definitely, the city can definitely help with promotion of the of the newsletter or any other type of outreach you're doing. I think uh, when I was talking to Councillor Sang, I just mentioned that I think the actual distribution, though, should be coming from the city council side. So if whether that's the clerk or a designated member of the council that's sending out the uh, communications, I think uh, I think that would be kind of a more effective use. Um, uh, yeah, and then in terms of uh, assisting just with 
you know, any other types of, if you want suggestions or insights or, or help setting up accounts, things like that, then obviously more than happy to help. Councilor Sang. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, I Thank you for clarifying. Um, I, I I think what, what I meant was just more for, you know, when, it, it, um, uh, like the mayor's newsletter does um, link often to other newsletters. I think that's that's what I was more referring to. And Steve can nod if that's possible. <laughs> um, he he gave us a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so so something like that. Um, maybe putting in when we have something really important, putting in a few points for us. Um, but um, we did talk, and he did think keeping the independence of the city council is important. Um, and so having us develop our own systems for distribution will be really important as well. Um, we, we, we only, we only have one person raising their hand at the moment. So, uh, miss, I'm oh, sorry, uh, miss, miss, miss Kaya, would you prefer to speak? And, and then Councilor Pizarro. Um, this is Patty Kaya, One Monument Street, and I'm sorry if this isn't the appropriate time in the meeting. I apologize. I don't know the protocol, um, but I do have a question and also a comment. So um, I think uh, my comment is this is a great idea. It's great to improve constituent communication and to reach constituents kind of where they live in terms of demographics, like young people prefer certain mediums that older constituents might appreciate the newsletter. So I think that's a great mix and I appreciate the initiative to improve and expand communication. But I do have one concern and it might be a question for the communication director with the city. I would like as a constituent to understand the boundaries of official communication and are there any, is there any policing of what constitutes official communication, because I'm concerned that this type of informal communication could easily go from simple fact-based reporting of events that have occurred and will occur in the future, opportunities for constituent um, participation. I'm concerned about spin, just to be quite honest with you, that this could easily devolve into forward um furthering each or any one of your sort of political platforms and so that's why i'd like to understand better what the mechanisms are so that official communication is one thing in the world and then your personal opinions is something else and how you represent it to the public kind of that dividing line matters so i, I don't I, I know it's a big question but i'm I would like to understand it better. Thank you. Mr. Smirty. Uh, yeah, thanks, Patty. I guess, are you kind of, are you just talking about how you kind of differentiate between official government communications and then like campaign uh, communications? Because um, I guess yeah, if, if that's... I think that's the question, yes. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a body, I think, or a, an agency that kind of is the one that uh, oversees, um, you know, whenever a, um, you kind of use uh, your government, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It? Just like whenever you're in a government setting and you're campaigning when you shouldn't be. Uh, I forget exactly which agency that is, but uh, generally, you know, that is something that is self-policed and i know obviously from the communications that we put out the mayor has her own uh you know official government social media platforms the newsletter the website that's all that's all her government page and as a government employee obviously i don't put out campaign communications this is not my job and that would be against the law obviously um so i i just don't think that whatever is being put out on the city council side is right. I mean, you're correct. It cannot be anything that's campaign related, but I don't, I don't see that, I guess, as a, as an issue so much is because that's kind of how, uh, you know, everyone understands, I guess, the ethical component of that. And they're going to be putting out kind of their government work. And then I assume their campaign things will be supported on their campaign pages. 
don't know if that answers the question. I know it's a little complicated and um, I don't exactly have the mechanism for which that's kind of that oversight happens. Uh, but just in my experience, people tend to abide by that rule because you can, it's definitely unethical. And I, I think illegal, I think you get fined. I don't, I don't exactly know what, what happens, but it's something that's very strict. So. Yeah. Um, sorry, there's two, uh, counselors <clears throat> the, at the moment, but Ms. Kaya, did you have a follow-up that you wanted to add to that? You raised your hand again. Not sure if that clarified the question for you. Just was going to answer the question. Yeah, I was yeah. going to help answer if, so, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind if you could give me just another second to clarify. I'm actually not talking about pure campaigning. I'm actually under, trying to understand better how in this, in this forum that you're suggesting, how you enforce news versus propagating a, an opinion about, like, oh, I'll give you an example because I'm, I'm obviously doing a very poor, ex like, I've, like job of explaining this. So ex example, I attended last night's meeting, which I thought was a massacre, no matter what side of the issues you were on. So I, the first thing that came to mind when I heard this proposal was, huh, so how would members of the city council characterize the work that was done last night if they were using all of these very informal social media channels, for example? Um, I know that Councillor Lazaro was first, but Councillor saying if you could answer, if you wanted to provide an answer to the question. Um, I, I would like to answer. I, I saw that Steve had his hand briefly raised. If he ha if he wants to speak to that first, that would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I don't want to, I don't want to talk for city council members, but I know, you know, in terms of the mayor's communications, like, I mean, the mayor is going to put out her own opinion on policy. That's kind of like how that's what she'll do and i think that's her prerogative as an elected official so um i i'm not exactly sure i guess then what 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 your uh what your question is kind of referring to just because i think as elected officials like they're you're going to be in a position to advocate for your stance and that is a government uh um it's part of your government job so um that's i guess my my answer to that Councilor Lazaro. Um, so every elected official has an obligation to tell their constituents what they're working on. And um, we have been kind of remiss in, in not carrying out that part of our job thus far. So what I would say about what happened last night is we um, voted on, so for example, uh, about the um, real estate transfer fee, I would say uh, last night at the meeting, we heard public comment and we voted to send the real estate transfer fee to the uh, planning and permitting committee, <laughs> which is what happened. <laughs> um, uh, if, that, if that's what we, like, if that's the information that we were sharing in the newsletter, that's how I would present it. Um, but every government, every elected government official is sharing information with their constituents about what work they're performing. And um, constituents can be in favor of that work or not in favor of it um, in the same way that we would share information about like the, the um, vote to uh, um, in favor of a ceasefire that then we, we shared a letter that we uh, sent to our federal delegation that was then shared with President Biden. We, we would just share it as like, this is what we voted on and this is what was passed. And uh, these are the other things that happened during the meeting. Um, we would just, I think that's how it would go. And the, the, uh, one of the reasons why we would have a rotating group of um, counselors participating in this is so that it wouldn't really be editorialized, but it's not, it's not really something that you can editorialize, just kind of going through what we're, what we're doing and how the votes went, if that clarifies things. Councilor saying. I think uh, Councilor Zaro put it really well. Um, the, the vision of this is just to say, we voted on this item, this is how that vote went, and link to that item um, as well. And occasionally, um, if, we're, if we're just doing a release about one agenda item, posting the text of that resolution as well. Um, we did, I, I spent quite a lot of time thinking about how we could make this um, as official and as not 
politicized as possible. And I, that, um, as Councillor Lazar referred to, that is the idea of having this rotate amongst a lot of different councillors to have that switch. Um, and also to, to make sure that we are uh, approving them as a committee together. Now, um, Councillor Scarpelli is often is usually here. Um, he doesn't really miss any of these meetings. Um, I, you know, there's a reason, I mean, there's a reason why he's on this committee in the first place, but there's also a reason why, um, why I wanted to, to have this committee approve it, right? Because him and I, we don't usually vote the same, or we vote the same way half of the time, but there, we have our major disagreements, and I want to make sure that he feels comfortable with those press releases that we're sending out as well. Um, and so that's the idea of having it uh, approved by a body of five people first. Councilor Callahan. Thank you. Um, I agree with both y'all, and I just wanted to add that um, I'm probably even more excited to put into the newsletter things that are upcoming than mm -hmm. things that already passed, because that allows for people in the community to participate in the decisions uh, to be involved in engaged in democracy. So uh, those are, you know, those are difficult to spin. We simply just state what is coming up and what is going to be on the agenda, uh, and that way people will know. Uh, when to come if they want to speak out about something. Thanks. Councilor Lazaro. Um, one of the, I think one of the most important things that came out of the meeting last night uh, to me was that a lot of people um, were uncertain about what was being discussed and there had been a lot of misinformation and rumors um, that had been going around uh, misleading people and a lot of people were here because they were angry about something that was not that was not true information about what we were gonna be talking about um, that I learned from talking to people after the meeting. Um, I think we could have avoided that if we had been already implementing something like this kind of system. Um, if we had already had stuff on social media that was clarifying the stuff, we could have headed off some of those uh, misinterpretations of what we had been trying to do. So I'm really excited for this kind of process to um, avoid situations like that in the future. I also think that um, the short video format will be really good for that. It'll uh, catch people's attention and it'll be able to um, clarify things really quickly as you're like scrolling through and it's part of your day. Um, not everybody has like a, a big chunk of time to devote to learning about what's going on in city council or what's coming up in city council um, that is going to, going to apply to their life. Um, but they might have 30 seconds to see, um, oh, there's there's going to be an, a discussion that's really important to me coming up. Um, I'd like to be at that meeting. And if it doesn't apply to them, or if it's something they already like the idea of, and they sort of trust us to go ahead, then they they know about that too. So I think all of these things are, are really important um, going forward, and it's just going to help us all work together to uh, make sure that we're doing things that um, work for the most people possible. I guess just to offer my own point of view on the question, um, I, I like as part of my campaign website and whatnot, I maintain a blog and a uh, newsletter myself, and that's just pretty much the form where I say whatever's on my mind, I just try to be as informal as possible. But there is a distinction between that and something coming out of an official government body, in my view. I, I personally would see the newsletter as just straight up facts about what is actually being discussed in uh, in city council and what we're doing what we're voting on what we have voted on and I think that you know if if we were voting on something that were coming out of my personal campaign website that there would obviously be a lot of disagreements on that but if we're as a city council voting on something that is just supposed to be very fact-based then that's everybody can agree on you know what we're discussing and what we're doing so it's really just uh, the goal would really just be keep people keeping people informed of current activities councillor callahan thank you um so i assume this is because i only had four hours of sleep although it could also be because <laughs> you have had four hours of sleep when you wrote these but i um didn't fully understand the first three motions and if it's okay with you because Hey, we're in a body where words matter. 
Do you mind reading yes. those slowly? And I think I will probably make slight amendments just to the wording to sure, make sure, sure that that wording is, is easily understood by everybody. Is that okay? One at a time. Great. Yeah, yeah. A um, motion of Councillor Callahan to have Justin Sang read all the <laughs> 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 No, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be happy to read them without a motion. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the, the very first one is a motion to start a city council newsletter to summarize important city council meetings and discussions, as well as inform the public as to upcoming meetings to be distributed prior to and approved at each, um, or I should, I should amend this to say, to be distributed to um, committee members pr prior to and approved at each meeting of the committee on resident services and public engagement. Yeah, the only thing for me is the word newsletter to me it means an email newsletter. So I wonder if we can call it a communications plan or communications um, or I'm not sure. I, I don't know if there's a better word and if everybody else thinks it's fine, that's fine with me. But like I was confused when I, I really thought you meant an email newsletter. I defer to my colleagues. <laughs> I I personally think newsletter is you think it's okay? the best the best description for that kind of thing. Yeah, because well, I, I I feel like people that are more like certain generations would understand a newsletter is like an email. Older generations might understand the newsletter and it's more original, physical. con like physical things. Piece of so paper. It, it could be. I, I think that's pretty much the clearest word we're going to get out of Can this. Can you person. say multi-platform newsletter? I, that just that just no? feels like it. I, yeah. I think that's okay. difficult because if you guys understand it, that's fine. I just to me, it meant something different from what you meant. I, I, I get what you're. I get what you're saying. I, de I definitely yeah. understand what you're saying. It's it's just that I, it's one of those things where I feel like attempts to come up with another word would just make it a bit more muddled. That, that's just me, though, personally. I think with multi-platform in particular, um, I see the the this written newsletter as the basis of everything else. And so if we say multi-platform, we might fall into the, the space of, like, we don't know if we would have to keep voting on every single video that we send out. Mm -hmm. and what if we say monthly newsletter content? Newsletter content? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Thank yeah, and, and, and we, can, we can decide at a further time what exactly to call it if we want. Yeah, but yeah. No, I just, or, only because it meant something different to me than what you meant. That's mm -hmm. the only reason, so... Thank you. I apologize for <laughs> I, I, I think this is something that we can uh, we can just say newsletter content for now, and then at right. our upcoming meeting where we do, I assume we'll have. And when we will have perhaps slept a little bit more. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. With the with with the upcoming uh, meeting next month, I'm assuming that we'll have one draft on our desks right. and at that point and we, we can, can workshop it, right? we can workshop it yeah i didn't realize i just thought this was no no it's a great point <laughs> the second motion um was a motion for the chair of the committee on resident services and public engagement to create and distribute a sign up list of i i guess instead of sign up list maybe sign up form sign up form of councillors who wish to rotate responsibilities in writing the city council newsletter content and or making short form videos summaries in collaboration with Medford Community Media and to authorize the chair to create a calendar for these responsibilities. As long as it specifically includes any city councillor, not just this okay. committee, that's all. I'll, that's I'll all make sure that... To, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Love it. Um, just give me a second. I think the best way to do that would be to say, um, to create and distribute a sign up form, uh, create a sign up form and distribute to city councilor, all city to all city councilors who wish to rotate responsibilities. Yes, yeah, I, I'm also gonna resend this in a new email to you. Did you get the Did you get the original email? I got the original. I've already pasted it in the paper form, so it's it's going to be easier for me to type in just the, the individual edits. All right. Um, the second motion. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, was a motion for the chair of the Committee on Resident Services and Public Engagement and or his desi designee to work with our uh, communications director and other city staff to distribute uh, the city council newsletter content and to create an email list for the city council to use. Perfect. Love it. Thank you. Just adding the word content. That, that does it. <laughs> I think at this point, I just, I just, I just had a question. Uh, this could be something that Steve can answer. But in terms of getting the email list, what would is is there any? I, I understand we just talked about opt-in laws. Maybe this was covered earlier on in the meeting. But where would we get the emails from? Would we be like, uh, yep, yep, uh, Councillor Callahan and the clerk. Oh, I was just going to say, like, you know, if the mayor helps distribute any of these other email lists agrees, then what they do is they don't just distribute our content as if it's theirs. They say, mm -hmm. you know, sign up here, like, here is the content, sign up here. And that gives everyone on their list the opportunity to opt in to our list. And if, if I might jump in quickly, I from my conversations with Steve, it seemed like that was actually the main thing that he could do in helping us is, um, like what they do with other departments in their newsletters, put in a link at, on, on the newsletter saying, here's a new city council newsletter, sign up. Uh, clerk. Um, just to provide a little context for what we do in the clerk's office with uh, council meeting agendas and committee agendas. Um, we, as a matter of course, in addition to physically posting it in the office and then posting it on the website, as a matter of course, we send it to an email distribution list, which includes uh, all users in the city of Medford email system. And then it's a, there is an opt-in that's been created over the last several years. Uh, there's a couple, I mean, there's, 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 there's more, there's a lot more opt-ins than there are opt-outs because everything has to be, you, I can't just blindly send somebody a newsletter. They have to opt in for it. Um, even if that's the council agenda and it's an official communication, they still need to opt in for it. But so we sort of have a, rather clumsily curated email list that gets copied and pasted into um, into an email that goes out every time we do we, we distribute a council agenda or a, or a committee agenda but the important part that I'm taking a long time to get to is that it's entirely an opt-in system for the Medford residents and other constituents who want to see that uh, who want to see those agendas if I may Sorry, I just saw that Steve had his hand raised on, on Zoom. Uh, oh, Councilor Sang? Um, so on the clerk's point, I think that's a great basis for us to go off of. And maybe something that we can do as a committee is find ways to um, publicize the opt-in opt um, and to really do some work into building that email list up. I think the clerks work really hard to get the list to where it is right now, but um, we all have our personal networks as well and uh, our own constituents who reach out to us and want to learn more. And if we if we can point them to that direction, say, here's a link to opt into this list um, and we're going to start posting newsletters on that list, then that might be a good Put it thing at the it. bottom of it. Put it in your email signature. True. Uh, Steve, got a... yeah. Uh, thank you. No, I was just going to add to. Um, in, in addition to adding it to the news to the mayor's newsletter, um, we can also obviously add just a direct sign up uh, link on the city council page. Um, I don't know if you've ever went to our alerts page, but that's um, we usually try to plug that pretty periodically for sign ups, um, and then it and allows people to go directly into our like um, our newsletter platform to sign up. I'm not uh, entirely sure. I don't remember if Councillor Sang mentioned the platform that uh, you wanted to use for this uh, system. We use Constant Contacts as well as uh, other departments. I think the Health Department and PDS do as well. Uh, and that's been really effective for us getting signups. Um, it's a pretty easy system to use also to create. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. I also was not aware of the, the sign up for the email for the agenda i was just curious how that works how to how do residents sign up for that clerk yeah um i should also add that before we started this new software um steve and emma in the communications office actually would help us because uh, they would be the ones posting it to the website um when it needed to get posted i mean they've always been sort of 
involved in this when we send them agendas. I mean, they're, they're right away, you know, posting it within, you know, five, 10 minutes of getting an email. Um, Steve, in terms of the, in terms of the, um, in terms of the opt-in email, what happens is it's, it's sort of really analog. Uh, people call us, they stop in the office, they send us emails and say, how do I get a city agenda list? You know, how do, and I, and they only have one option. They're either on the list or they're not on the list. So in other words, I don't have a separate list for, uh, committee meetings. I don't have a separate list for council agendas. You know, I don't have a separate list for the for the monthly meetings that the president and vice president sent out when they when they set up the, the, the proposed monthly schedule. It's all the same list. So it, so once you're on that list, you're on that list until you're off that list. Gotcha. No, I, I for some reason assumed it was like an actual. Uh, they were able to like uh, sign up uh, online or something like that or through an email oh, system. It's, it's, yeah, but I didn't realize. It, yeah. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I was that smart. Right. Yeah. Um, we could, but but yeah. Anyway, um, that's definitely something that we would be we could do to help uh, get more signups. Is just promote it, obviously, across our platforms and the city platforms, and as well as on the website for the city council. We also briefly discussed revamping portions of the website too uh, to better fit the needs of the council. Councilor saying, thank you so much, Steve. That's really helpful, and that would be excellent. Um, I had a question about um, constant contacts. Is it is there a subscription fee that the city has already signed up to that we could create a, an account with, or would we have to subscribe separately as a city council? Uh, would you know the details about that? I I don't know. There's definitely a fee um, for that. <clears throat> I, I don't know how many like accounts we have under our like. Um, under our subscription uh we may have already met the threshold i just i don't know for sure because like i said we do have a few uh departments already u utilizing that um that is a fee i think i don't know though if like mailchimp may not have a fee or there may be other ones that are are free of, to use but i can definitely look into um to if you can get an account under constant contacts thank you so much i so i I think these are all um, questions to keep considering. I mean, I think we have we already have something to build off of, so we can we can use that for now. I believe the second motion that I introduced would empower Matt or Matt's uh, Chair Lemming or Chair Lemming's designee to work keep working with Steve and Adam to to work out if we can get on an official platform or if there's a better way to build out. So I think a lot of this future action is already there's already a motion for it. Yeah, I just, if I could add one thing too, I also think you need to kind of develop a policy around your social media. Um, so uh, just so you know how your accounts work and how, um, who has access and things like that, because obviously you don't want to uh, kind of leave yourself uh, victims to anything. So I would definitely recommend setting some sort of policy in place before you kind of launch these things. The, the social media accounts would all be maintained through the clerk's office, I imagine. So, well, I, <clears throat> I was just thinking, like Facebook, for example. I think like you need a personal Facebook account to set up like a a page. So you just have to take that into consideration as well. Right. Are saying. I think that's a good segue into the social media conversation, uh, and so I guess I. I um, had two big questions for the, my other counselors here tonight. I, the first one being which platforms we should set up. I've heard um, I've heard people say Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Reddit, YouTube. We could we could do all of them and then assign different ones to different counselors. Maybe have one counselor take up more than one and work with the clerk to maintain it. Um, there, we, we can talk about the policy part later, but I think the first thing is to decide which platforms we, um, we think are worth using. I think the second thing to decide is um, what, what does that policy look like? And I guess if it would be helpful for the council, I, we could motion for me to dr draft the policy for social media and then come back next meeting and then create the social media meeting, uh, um, create the social media accounts at the next meeting. Um, that could be possible, but I, I, if if it's if the committee prefers creating an account now and then and then just to set up an account now, I think that also works. I, 
Yeah, I, I, do, I do, like, just, just kind of a something that's on my mind while we're talking about that. I, I do feel like we do need to treat each social media platform as sort of an environment in itself. So there's plenty of precedent for having city council type pages on like Facebook, for instance, but I feel like Reddit is kind of a different environment for that sort of a thing. It's where a lot of people get their information, but like an official um, Reddit posting, um, it, yeah, it, it is definitely like the specific policy is definitely up for discussion. Uh, Councillor, thought you were first. Okay, Councillor Callahan. Um, if we really want for this to get to as many people as possible, um, I suspect that we need to really make an effort to be on all of those platforms because that's kind of the point is that each platform has its own subset of people that actually check that platform and prefer that platform to other things. Um, I think we should not neglect to at least consider um, texting, WhatsApp, discourse. Um, these are things, so especially like texting and WhatsApp are used you know, by a lot of uh, less affluent immigrant communities, um, and so if we if we don't even discuss them, and I understand that you know texting uh, probably would cost us money, um, but if we don't at least consider those, I think that we are um, sort of blocking off certain people to engagement, and specifically people who tend to be the least engaged. So I would love for us to consider those as well. No, uh, I, 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 I. I... I, d I definitely agree with that. I just, with, with each platform, we, I think that it would be good to have a specific strategy in mind and to look at what other folks have done for that. Because with WhatsApp, we would need a way to get lots of different phone numbers for that, which we may not have at the moment. That is pretty, uh, that, that could be a very intensive process. But I definitely hear your point about different communities and um, whatnot using these different social media platforms. Councillor Lazaro. I would agree. Uh, I like where your head's at. Um, <laughs> uh, in the same way that we would want to have, you know, hard copies for people that aren't connected, we need to be thinking um, in a progressive way about uh, folks that are connected in a different way. Um, uh, the I just would want to um, say that if our content is going to be functionally similar and start with the newsletter content. I think maybe this meeting is gonna have to like top off with the newsletter and then we should come back to social media next time. Mr. Smeardy. Yeah, as, I mean, I don't wanna get like too into the weeds or so I'm, you can stop me definitely if you don't need to talk about this, but I would just, I would also, you know, it might be helpful if you put out some sort of survey to your constituencies and then see where they consume their news and their information on what platforms. So you can really identify where you want your messaging to go, or at least where the predominant amount of your messaging to go. Cause I agree. It'd be great to do texting, but you just want to make sure that you have people that are utilizing that and getting information that way. Cause you don't want to overextend your bandwidth either or your workflow. Um, um, Sorry, I was going to say one other thing too, but um, oh yeah, I, I would definitely also, again, this is all for your planning purposes, but I would definitely set up a calendar, like a social calendar. So you know, so you have enough content to fill all your platforms and then you don't kind of have a drop off in content because then you're going to lose followers or lose likes and things like that. And you want to ma maintain the, all of those different uh, platforms so people know that they can rely on that. So that was my, uh, my input. <laughs> So saying. Thank you so much, Steve. I think that that's really helpful. Um, and that idea, I, I think, is really good. Um, I think, in general, I, I also agree. I, I think Councillor Callahan brought up a great point about the texting and WhatsApp. Um, it might, I, I would love for us to do everything, but I think we should talk about bandwidth as well. And I think that is something for us to think about over the next few weeks. Um, I'd be happy to pick up the social media conversation at the next meeting. And maybe in the meantime, either um, either one of us could create a survey and post it representing the committee and we could have a motion for that, or we could just not have a motion, just have one of us create a survey, not representing the committee, but just surveying, <laughs> surveying people's uh, media usage. I don't know if there's a preferred path. 
I think one of us would post it on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. I feel like this. I feel like a survey would be kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. That's a that, that's, yeah. a, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. If we said the survey, I, don't know. What's next? I did. I did. I did. I did think that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So maybe, so, so maybe we don't do the survey, but um, maybe we think about it over the next few weeks. But I think in the meantime, it might behoove us in 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 uh, in, in order to speed things up a little bit to. Um, for one of us, I can do it, um, to create social media guidelines, like a policy, um, for us to walk into these apps with. Okay, um, I'll give them a sec. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on the social media thing then. Yes. Um, I'd like to motion for this, uh, for this committee to, um, do you want me to do it? I feel like Councillor Sang is taking on a lot of responsibility for these tasks, <laughs> and I feel like it's a little unevenly distributed. Would you like to not have to do a draft social media policy, and maybe I could do it, and just put something together that we could review as a committee next time? That works. I'd be great. happy to. So I'll I'll motion that um, uh, I can uh, draft a social media um, uh, policy for the committee to review at our next meeting. On the motion, do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Councillor Sang. Settle down. <laughs> no, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I I just don't want, you know, it, it, it's it's such a it's such a it's such a project that I've been working on that I don't want to put work on you guys that you you don't want to do, but I'm so happy. I'm very, very happy for people to take <laughs> to take things off my desk. And then do we want to lump all these together Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. Well, we can voice vote that anyways. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh -oh. <laughs> I, I, I just want to quickly go to, if, if, if you'll let me, just the last few slides, because um, I, I have some ideas about how to proceed with those ideas, but I don't think we should necessarily move on everything today um and so actually this one i did actually no no oh, no 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 uh just ideas to discuss um but this one i do actually have a motion for so i um i've talked about this very briefly at the last meeting and i didn't really um have time to go into depth about it before the last budget as a person like a, as a counselor myself i put out a uh, a survey for feedback about um, what people would like to see in our budget. Um, and I, I posted it on all the social media, sent it out to email lists, um, asked other counselors to, to help distribute for me. And it got a lot of responses. I might have gotten three, 400 responses. And there was a lot of great feedback in that, res uh, in that survey. I would love if this committee um, would to do that. Um, so instead of doing it as an individual counselor, doing it as uh, a public engagement committee, I think that would be really powerful and, and impactful. And we can, as in that case, as counselors, we can all distribute that information to all of our lists um, and we would all be empowered to. I would, I, I'd love for us to talk about this, but I would like to motion for um, me to present a draft of a budget input survey at our next meeting. We have a second. So the motion of Councillor Sang, second by Councillor Lazaro. Yes. How many how many motions do do we have? I was I, I, Yeah, it should be five. Councillor Callahan. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have to do a roll call, by the way. Yeah, we can just move to join the proof. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Callahan. Um, I, I apologize. I will have to leave in nine minutes. I move that we join these and approve them. Okay. I'll second the move and <laughs> join the proof. <laughs> On the motion by Councillor Callahan to join and approve the other five motions. <laughs> 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> now, the last two um, things I have on this slide are, um, so Steve mentioned, um, we talked briefly about the city website and he had some ideas about what we could put on the city website out on the council page. Oh, sorry. I didn't ask for you to recognize me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. You, you, you did. You did. <laughs> sorry. I yeah. literally <laughs> just looked <laughs> Well, I was just, I, I, I just wanted to, to move the question on the, cause we, we, we motioned to join them. We didn't actually vote on I think them. it was join and approve. Oh, never mind. Then. Sorry, I, I, thought, I thought it was just I thought it was just joined them. <laughs> now, what uh, kept you up last night? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know it was it was it was something. Uh, anyway, uh, I I would like to I would like to recognize my esteemed colleague, the counselor, saying thank you so much. Um, so Steve and I talked really quickly about um some ideas that we could um um do on the city website, like putting the newsletters on there, a sign up for the for the email list. Um, we talked about building out pages for counselors with bios and um, for us to put out our own press releases if we need. Um, I think this is a future discussion because I think I would love to, there is actually a paper in, um, in committee about meeting to discuss uh, uh, reforming the city website. I'd love to meet in a future, um, setting where we can publicize that meeting really widely um, and get people to come and um, give us some feedback as to what they would want to see in uh, in a reformed city website, especially on the council page. Um, so that was just my kind of note on that one. And the very last thing, which I think we should um, create another paper for it. So I think, um, I think it would make sense to, um, to, for counselors to introduce it as a resolution on a meeting agenda, but meeting with underrepresented groups. We talked, um, Council Lazaro and I were at the senior center and we mentioned doing a coffee hour with senior residents at the senior center. Um, I know I've talked with um, Councillor Callahan during um, the election season about um, an idea set like this where we do a listening tour with um, underrepresented groups. Um, I, I just wanted to bring this up because I think I was just saying that I think the right course of action would be to create a paper number for it in the future. But that's all I had. Thank you. I can be that person creating a paper number for it, putting it on the agenda at some point. Yeah, I can work with you. Or, yeah, I even better. Yes. yes. <laughs> and do we have any further comment from members of the public? Seeing none, do we? Councillor Callahan. Move to adjourn. Do we have a second? Okay, on the motion by Councillor Callahan, seconded by Councillor Lazaro to adjourn. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nay. Uh, motion passes. Have a good night. <laughs>